Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is December 19th, 2022, and let's get over the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So first things first, today is the big day. Putin arrived in Minsk with flowers, as you can see here, to visit Lukashenko. And obviously, we all know why he did this visit today. And he wasn't the only one that presented himself. It was also his minister, Shoigu, Lavrov, and many other uh, important Russian officials that came all with him to Minsk, which is usually not the way it goes. Usually, it's Lukashenko who goes to Moscow to visit Putin, right? Putin rarely goes to Minsk. He is supposed to be, you know, the important guy. And so clearly, as I've mentioned previously, and many other uh, news mentioned is that he mainly does this or decide to go to Minsk to force Lukashenko's hand to go to war directly with Russia against Ukraine and perhaps go uh, do some sort of offensive on the northern border of Ukraine just as the general Zeluzhny of um, the commander-in-chief of the Ukraine forces mentioned in his um, interview last week with The Economist saying that he is expecting a massive Russian offensive from the north in 2023. So I think that this is really putting, trying to put pressure on Lukashenko and perhaps also warning him to indicate that, look, if you don't do anything within the next few months, watch out. So obviously this is a huge statement and uh, we'll really have to, I'm, I'm wondering what is going to be Lukashenko's decision when it comes to that i think at the end of the day obviously any man fears death and i think he might probably go through with it but who knows right it's a very it's a suicidal plan either way trying to attack ukraine from the north is you know just a terrible idea the ukrainian defenses are strong and you know the ukrainians know that the russians potentially in the belarus could potentially attack again from the north as you can see it's a very vast border and it has been strengthened in the past few months with walls, uh, bridges were mined and destroyed so nobody can cross this border anymore. And, you know, there's so many different roads that they can take as well, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be towards Kiev or Chernihiv, just as they did last year or last um, in February. They perhaps would try to go through Volin and, you know, kind of stop these Western um, arms that are being transported from, you know, Poland. Um, perhaps that could be another goal for Putin, but it's really trying to destabilize and push as many Ukrainian forces that could be used right now in the east to protect the northern border, right? It's kind of this bluffing that is ongoing, but I have no doubt that Putin, being as desperate as he is, will try to do something on the north. So that's it, guys. I mean, um, we'll know, we'll, we won't know what was really discussed between both of them, but I think it's pretty clear what Putin's goal was to come to Minsk. In other news, really great news is that the Ukrainians have pushed back the Russians uh, from Bakhmut. As you guys remember, for the last few days I have been talking about how the Russians did manage to get into Bakhmut, uh, the city outskirts. So looking at the map again, um, it hasn't been updated on Deep State, but the Russians, as you can see, kind of managed to get into uh, this area of Bakhmut, which is just the very edge of the city, as well as Opitne, but they were pushed back the Ukrainian forces. And, um, you know, I'm very confident that the Russians will not be able to take Bakhmut simply due to the fact that, as I've said in my previous video, that the Russians are not capable of bringing heavy vehicles uh, into the city proper, right? They, their tanks, their heavy PCs, um, their artillery, everything is really seven kilometers behind the the front lines. And so they're just kind of guessing where they're shooting from that point, right? And the Ukrainians have saturated these entire lines with ATGMs, anti-air defense systems with the Stingers and uh, Star Streakers, I assume, and many other types of weaponry that is just would pulverize any attempt at bringing large convoys of vehicles. So essentially what the Russians are just doing right now is just uh, constantly doing waves of uh, attacks with their conscripts, the Wagner group and other Russian uh, soldiers. It's just kind of a mixed bag of random soldiers that they put together and they just tell them to go to the front line. So there's no way they can take Bakhmut with this type of, you know, um, planification with this type of strategy. So I'm very confident by at least the end of this year, nothing's going to really happen. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, but 
it's been shown the last few months the Russians really, really have been incapable at really changing their strategy, at doing things differently, right? All we hear is these constant attacks towards the city, right? And of course, they're also trying to go around the city. Did they manage to take this down, the Vyakovlivka? So they're trying to also perhaps encircle the Ukraines from behind through Soldar. But, you know, they're really well-defended positions. And I have no doubt that the Russians will have a lot of difficulty if it's going to be almost impossible for them to take uh, Bakhmut in the near future. That's at the minimum. And, of course, this comes at a heavy price for the Ukrainian side. There's no denying that. A lot of soldiers are dying on, on, on the Ukrainian side defending the city, but it is worth defending Bakhmut. It's a strategic town. We've I've already mentioned it multiple times why. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, what really matters is the results and the lack of results for the Russian army to really push and somehow get some massive amounts of um, territory in this area really shows that nothing is working for them so let's hope this continues on so that's pretty much the news for that and in, in addition um i also remember that i made a video uh, a couple of weeks ago kind of talking about the fact that perhaps the shahids are not being used anymore by the russian so uh russian army because perhaps it's the winter and their parts are not really effective during the winter but that's not true uh, the Russians have continued using the Shahids in the last few days. We've seen a lot of attacks with these Iranian drones. So I don't think that the parts are um, is a factor as to why we haven't seen that much action the last few weeks. But I think the Russians got a new batch of, of uh, Iranian drones. So now they're attacking. And today they've tried, they attacked Kiev again with the Shahids and I think other cities around Ukraine. But, um, right, the, the Russian strategy is to just terrorize Ukrainian population wherever they are in Kiev, Kharkiv, Odessa, you know, even small towns. So um, the Russians realize that they just don't have the capacity anymore to, to gain territory. So the only thing they can do right now is just terrorize people and try to destroy and kill as many Ukrainians as they can, right? Essentially creating a genocide of Ukrainian people. That's their main uh, goal right now. So, of course, with all this destruction, with the Shahids, uh, the missile strikes, the constant shelling of, you know, dozens of Ukrainian cities every day, um, this has a, a massive impact on the Ukrainian economy. So I'm not all, I also try to bring reality to these updates that I give you guys. I'm not saying everything is just super duper for Ukraine and we're going to win and everything is going to be fantastic. There is obviously the, the negative side of it, and that is, of course, Ukraine's economy. Uh, being absolutely um, destroyed, right? It's it's in a very difficult situation right now. And so some sectors of the Ukraine economy have been set back decades and will have to be rebuilt literally from the ashes. There's no denying from that. You know, since the... So this article talks about since the beginning of the full-scale war, um, the occupying Russian forces have damaged or destroyed almost 450 industrial facilities. And I mean, the biggest of them all was Azovstal in Mariupol, which you know was one of the biggest steel works in Europe, if not the entire planet, which is pretty much a total loss. You know you have to completely rebuild that steel works, even if somebody would want to um, invest into that, that. That would be billions of dollars, most likely at this point. Um, and the loss of business assets has already reached more than ten billion dollars USD and continues to obviously grow every day. Most of the enterprises that have partly or completely stopped their work are in tourism, obviously, industry, construction, real estate, engineering, as well as agriculture. Uh, so basically, the prediction for every year is that Ukraine is going to uh, pretty much lose about 30 to 35 percent of its GDP per year, um, the re reduction of its GDP. So, um, you know, it's, it's very uh, dark, obviously expectations but it's understandable ukraine is the total war against russia right and ukraine obviously is not retaliating the same way towards russia as the russians are retaliating against ukrainians which their goal is to just destroy everything it's not even military infrastructure it's just civilians everything they can find they'll destroy it um so that's the strategy of the russians but um for all of those and i've seen a lot of viewers as well tell me about the fact that well you know maybe ukraine 
it should just you know sign a peace deal you know it, it's just not worth it look how ukraine has been sent back to the dark ages because it doesn't have electricity anymore and the people are struggling to live during this winter but at the end of the day guys my main question towards the people that have been writing these types of comments is okay let's sign a peace deal like we did in 2014 and what happened next you know back in 2014 2015 with these minsk deals right there was some sort of peace right um but eight years later russia rearmed itself right and did the same thing they continued destroying ukrainian cities and between those uh, during those eight years ukraine of course you know managed to restore and repair a lot of the roads you know and build new facilities in eastern ukraine the ones that they had in, under control um only to find them being completely annihilated again so pretty much what you're asking is a short-term rebuilding strategy of ukraine only to know and it we all know that russia is going to rearm itself if there's a peace deal negotiated and it doesn't matter if it's in two years five years 20 years russia is going to launch another attack at ukraine because at the end of the day a peace deal right now if it's signed is not going to be beneficial either for ukraine or for russia we know what were the ambitions for Russia. It was to grab the entirety of Ukraine. And they still have these ambitions. They want to completely annihilate Ukraine, as we know, and take it as Russian territory. That's their goal. And they've made it clear multiple times on the news. And Putin has said it multiple times. And on the Ukrainian side, of course, it's not a good deal either because you're still allowing your enemy literally at your um, at the edge of your border, right? Like They're still going to be there. So... It's not going to be beneficial. And at the end of the day, all the money that's going to be reinvested to rebuild Ukraine again is going to be completely useless because Russia is still going to launch another attack. So this is why it is extremely important to get rid of Russia, its military, defeat it, absolute defeat of the Russian army before we can start discussing about negotiations, peace deals, because Russia needs to be at the weakest position possible in order for this to be a viable solution this nego negotiation so this is what i believe um needs to be done in terms of that and let me know what you think right this is my personal opinion you might have something different i appreciate a variety of opinions as well and this is a little last comical little um image so this is in Yak irkutsk which is in far east of russia and this is an ad from the Russian military saying that uh, essentially a test for spies, essentially Ukrainian spies, you can uh, pretty much verify um, just by asking them for one little question. Then you scan a QR code and apparently in this QR code that you scan, it's essentially um, asking these people to ask potential spies uh, to pronounce the word Siktivkar uh, and Bashkor Tostan. So apparently a very easy test. So it's just very funny how they think that, you know, Ukraine spies, first of all, are going to be buttering, going all the way up to Irkutsk to spy whatever is going on there. Um, potentially there might be military facilities, but I'm pretty sure that the ones that are mostly, um, you know, in imminent danger are the ones closest to the border, not somewhere in Irkutsk. Uh, if you look at the map, Irkutsk, I believe, is like somewhere really, really far east uh tuva yeah so you can see irkutsk is right here close to ulan Ude. so technically yes there is a big military base here in ulan Ude. so it makes sense why the russians are panicking a little bit but either way it's a very stupid <laughs> way of testing whether somebody is a spy or not in my opinion so that's that for my slides and i have two very uh how can i say sad videos uh, just because this first one, I called it Schadenfreude, and this is in German, and one of my viewers actually wrote that a couple weeks ago in my video, and it's a German word for uh, that the definition of it is essentially deriving pleasure from seeing somebody else's misfortune or pain, which is what the Russians have right now, right? They're deriving pleasure from seeing the Ukrainians in the Ukrainian struggle to survive and live, right? And so this is a perfect example of this schadenfreude. Let's hear what she has to say. So by the way, a toilet bowl has already been brought to me from Ukraine a long time ago. So her husband most likely brought, stole a toilet, yes, a toilet from Ukraine and brought it back to her. She's proud of that. Great victory for the Russian army. It has been installed. Here it is. Wow. Brand new toilet. 
of course, sadly enough, it's a broken cover, better than a hole in the floor. The fact that she even admits that they had a hole in the floor is kind of sad. We can finally do it in the toilet. Ukrainians, God bless you with more caliber cruise missile strikes. Well, no, no, of course not. Let the Garans fly the Iranian drones, and that's enough for you. And the sad part is that, you know, she has a child. You can't hear it because obviously I turn on the audio, but she has a child behind that's kind of asking for, for her, you know. And just the fact that this is a mother of a child that is literally deriving pleasure from seeing other mothers in Ukraine struggle throughout this entire devastating war just shows you just shows you that the Russians really enjoy this, right? They, I'm not saying the majority of the Russians, but a large population thinks that this is totally okay to have this type of behavior, you know, and admitting it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, on public, you know, social media. Um, it's just a really like big, deep, you know, um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, magnifying glass towards the Russian psychology right now. That is you know, like this. So unfortunately, there is a lot of these people in Russia. And last video is, again, I want to re remind my viewers of what the Russians created in Mariupol. You know, behind all these, you know, veils of how they're rebuilding the city, it's, you have to literally completely destroy it and rebuild it from the ground up. The Russians have destroyed completely the entirety of the city. And I believe this is very close to Azovstal, um i think the steel works is somewhere around there so you can see what the russians did they pulverized the city it's uh, it's like post apocalyptic you know um, visuals like you know a nuclear warhead just dropped on the city how can you rebuild a city like that how can you restore life when you know there's nothing that the russians are doing to rebuild it right it's absolutely you know infuriating to see what they've caused so this is why ukraine needs to win this is why i believe the ukraine people will be victorious on the end of it because this is a a matter of survival it's a, a matter of existence for the ukrainian people it's not about just winning it's about her it's about the fact that you want to call yourself ukrainian you don't want to call yourself russian right you don't want to be subjugated to uh, tr you know, to torture, to rape, to be abused by the Russian people, because that's what they're going to do if they're victorious. They're just going to genocide, create a genocide of Ukrainian people. So let that sink in for the people that think that Ukraine should be negotiating a peace deal with Russia. So that's it, guys. A huge thank you for my supporters. I appreciate you guys. And um, if you like my, my channel, please subscribe to it. If it's the first time that you've seen my video, please leave me a comment and uh, like my video. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.